Well, hello. My name's Penny. I live in the southeast of England with my husband, Pete, and my four chickens. And they're doing okay, as is he. And as is mum. Someone asked last to mum this week, and thank you very much. She's on this week, so I popped round earlier, and she's uh, doing February 1958, a little uh, piece. If you're new here, mum has found herself a little spot and she started when she was a little girl and um, now and again she comes on and we've got up to 1958 now so it, it's rather lovely to share and sometimes Pete does a bit but uh, I think he's going to do a bit next week he was just saying about oh I could talk about that I said lovely we'll do that for next week so maybe if he gets his act together then we can do that I also have a fascinating fact and this week it's about a butterfly. There's a little film at the end. Well, I was hoping to go round the garden and show you some flowers in the garden. I expect you've got them too, but I thought I'd show you mine. But, well, I was sitting in the garden doing my podcast last week. It's called a vlog. I've learned that. A podcast is something that you listen to. Uh, a blog is something that you write and a vlog is something that you watch. Anyway, I did my vlog last week in the garden. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it was lovely hearing the birds. And then, of course, summer left us and it's chilly here, overcast. And now I couldn't possibly be out there now. In fact, I couldn't even do a little film of the flowers because a lot of them are closed up. But maybe they'll come out for next week and I'll do one then. I have got a few little ones here. I just thought I'd show you the colours. They're gorgeous. Look at that. Isn't it exquisite? I mean, that is worth painting, isn't it? That really is. Different colour here. I hope the camera's picking it. Oh, the colours in real life are just beautiful. That one's got a dark centre. And that one had a light centre. This one, it's all open. It's just in a little saucer here. Look at that. I think they're called Christmas roses, aren't they? Oh, look at this one. It's gorgeous. Anyway. I brought them in because I thought, well, if I'm not out there, I might as well be in and have a look at them, their beautiful faces. So, yes, I was going to do a little film of that. So instead of that, I had Tommy, my great-grandson, for the night. My granddaughter kindly said I could, and um, I did. And he is the best baby. I took quite a, a nice bit of film for uh, Mum and Dad. I've shortened it down just to make an end film for this week as I haven't been out and done the flowers and all of that. Yeah, so a little bit of TA, transactional analysis. We're going to finish off the OK Corral. And um, for anybody that's new, I do do this little bit of counselling that I'm teaching. It started in episode 12, if you wanted to go back. And it does build. If you listen to this episode, you'll think, what on earth is she going on about? But if you go back to episode 12, if it's something for you, then it does build and you'll see what I'm talking about. So that's it. So where should we start? Ah, oh, let's start at the easy bit. I My wool shop opened, it's closed again. She was literally open for two days. And I went in and I bought some Bo Peep Falkland wool and nylon. It's from this book sublime some cute little patterns in it here we are design five she chose this now you see it's got a little zigzag on it we wanted a short collar it's got a little zigzag but with the bow peep wool it really it was too much so i just did the bottom zigzag i'll show you there's the short collar and there's the bottom bit I just did. 
is cute, isn't it? Mind you, it's going. It is. It is a uh, six to nine months, and I think that's going to be lovely. You know, later on in the summer, when you just want to pop a cardi on. I think that's a baby that's sitting up in the pram, don't you? However, Tom is three months old now. <laughs> Can you believe it? It was three months this week. So that's it. That's the back. So there you are. That's his little shawl jacket. I can recommend that pattern. It's so easy. So what I want to... Oh, yes. Now, a silent barrier. I've showed you my whips. If you've watched past episode, I showed you my whips. Work in progress. And there was, there was a silent barrier to me finishing these whips. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the squirrels. I mustn't look. Because, well, it was. It was it was the quilt. I hadn't planned on making the quilt. I just got scraps. Scrippity, scrappity, scrip, scraps. And my granddaughter Lois used to come round on a Tuesday then. Oh, mustn't jiggle the table. And we just got the pile of scraps. And I made a pile of, you know, the flowers. And then we looked and I said, what am I going to do with those flowers? Oh, we'll put them on a background square. And then we arranged the squares. It just grew. And then I looked at it and because I'd used ash mead in the EPP instead of papers, I don't know what made me do it. I just did it. I had them and I liked it. Anyway, then I thought, right, I've got to start quilting it. Um, Everything happened, you know, with lockdown and all of that. And my hands got a little bit weary. And I had a silent barrier. So my whips, wow, well, they just sat there. But they're on the move now. I'm really pleased. So I'll put some photos up while I'm talking. Because just down the road to me is Smart Frogs. Alison, oh, what a talented lady. What a talented lady. And she does long arm quilting. Never wanted my quilts long arm quilted. I've always done everything by hand. I've changed. And it's quite fun to change. Yeah, you think, oh, no, it's got to... No, it hasn't. And what she said to me is, we don't want it to be like Dunnell Mill. And I knew exactly what she meant squashed the living daylights out of it. Now, the, the pictures hopefully we'll be showing you that what she does is have a long piece of paper and the designs on the paper and then she guides the laser over the paper design. So technically she is doing it. And that then quilts the whole quilt. And I am thrilled to bits. I'll show you, I've taken some pictures. It's beautiful. Can you see the quilting? And you know what? It was on, well, it was on Pete's bed with baby. I put this on another bed and I put my shawls on top and I thought, my shawls are the same colours as this quilt. It's amazing how you have your, your colours and, and, and you can't help it. That's your palette and that's what you go to. So I want to show you. We I did have a piece of K facet on the back just because I had it and it was a scrappy quilt. But she said, oh, do you think that's quite right? I said, definitely not. It's really pretty. And not flat and squashed. It doesn't look like Darnell Mill. Let me hold it up. And then she's, we chose, we chose this linen 
a cotton, you know, it, it's just beautiful. In the quilt world, we always put a label on. I haven't done the label yet. I've been too busy with that, but the label will go on today. And you name your quilts and then you put your name. I usually do it, I write on the, on the cotton and then I go over so it's my handwriting on the back, which is very personal. The date, I'm going to put the date I started it, the date I finished. And the name I've come up with is Frolic. <laughs> because it's such a happy quilt. It makes me want to frolic. And it's till mostly Tilda and Liberty. And when you look at all those lambs gambling about in the fields, they're frolicking. And this is what this quilt has done. It brought us a lot of happiness, piecing it together, because we were chatting and designing. It actually has been on a little journey. It hasn't. It was a silent barrier. And then I took it to Smart Frogs and it frolicked about. Yeah, it was so excited to be finished and being used. That's what it's called. You probably think I'm nuts, but that's what it's called, frolic. So that's my quilt. Well, I think that's it. So I'm going to put Mum's piece up now. And Mum's piece. We had a little chat about 1958 February. So I hope you enjoy that. I'll see you the other side. Well, here we are again, Mum. Yes, lovely. Yes. Good morning all. Yes, and we're going to do February. 1958. I'm no. just going to have a glance through your diary, Mum, and see what you were up to. And on the 1st of February, you did shopping in the morning. That was a Saturday. And this is what you do. Basically, if I was going to read this diary, every morning, shopping in the morning. Yes. And yes, because uh, you shopped every day you then. Didn't have a fridge, no, did you? No. No fridge. You took me to the pictures in the afternoon and you we saw the pyjama game. Yes. It's Doris that Day, was, was yes, it? Yes, I think film. it was, yes. yes. But you didn't feel well in the evening and you fainted. Uh, but you felt better after a brandy. So we had a little chat about that. Yes. You couldn't imagine having brandy no, in the house, but no. you must have had a little yes. bottle of brandy. Yes. Yes. There was medicinal. All, that, that's right. It was always medicinal. Yeah. And uh, it was always handy there. Yes. If yes. you did feel a bit wobbly. That's right. Now, you were in bed all day on the Sunday. Dad cooked dinner. I wish you'd said what we had, but no, Dad cooked dinner. And then he took Chrissy over to... His mum's, I'll give you a bit of peace and quiet, I expect. Yes. Len and Peg called in the evening to see how you were. So your friends, Len yes. and Peg, but uh, Len was still away He's from still, work. Yes. Because he had this because bronchitis, didn't he? He had been really poorly. Yeah, yeah, but no, he, he called in. Yes. We did, obviously didn't worry about passing no. things on. No. Uh, and then, no. not being well yourself, uh, our next door neighbour's daughter, Diane, the next day her mum and dad went to work, so you took her for a medical yes. at school. Yes. Yeah. If you weren't feeling well, you just rested a bit and then <laughs> you were up again and on your feet. Got up doing and did things. it. Yeah. Yes, that's right. You didn't yes. go to bed for all that no. long. And then, well, you'd say, Penny met a girl in the park and has befriended her. I thought that was quite an unusual word yes. to use, befriended. Yes, yes because met a you, waif. you must have come home and told me all about this girl that you'd met. And yeah. I was probably a bit worried because it sounded as if she'd opened her heart to you. Yeah. And, and I was a bit concerned what, what it was all about. So on the Wednesday, you were busy in the morning. I went to the park with my newfound friend. I think you're a little bit cross about yes. this, Mum. And after dinner, you were waiting for the television engineer, but you had to go and look for me. And uh, you went over the park to look for me, but I'd pop round a friend's house. <laughs> but the friend, actually, was round at my house waiting for me, but I'd pop round there. And so you say, 
you've forbidden Penny to see her newfound friend again because mm. it obviously got me yes. in a right pickle. Yes. I'd forgotten the and friend got Carol me in was a pickle got as well you because in a pickle. I was busy in the house and exactly. didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Um, in the afternoon, you um, on the next day, on the Friday, you altered my uh, show clothes because I've obviously got a show coming yes. up. But you say it's very cold with heavy yes. snow. It was a terrible winter, that winter. Yeah. And of course, we didn't have any central heating or, no. you know, there was such a lot to And do, also coal you know. shortages, Mum. Yes. So you didn't have a lot of coal no. in the bunker. No. So, yeah, no. it was a... Maybe that's why you didn't feel too well, getting chilled yes. or something like yes. that. Yes. And then, of course, Len and Peg came in the evening and you played cards. <laughs> no. And this is Sunday. Yes. Dad worked in the morning. You altered my ballet dresses. And you had a quiet evening. I feel very pleased oh, for you, Mum. Yes. Altering ballet dresses, that can't be no. easy. No. And your ballet dress, my goodness, the yeah. material wasn't like the material you have no, now. You no, know. that's right. It's it heavy. Was, yes. It I remember it being material, heavy. Yes. And on the Monday, you did your washing in the morning. And um, Dad took uh, Len out for a driving lesson in the evening. And his wife was rather annoyed. Yes. I don't know why that she is. She didn't want him to drive. Oh, did she? No, she didn't think he'd be a careful driver. Oh, right. Tell me his dad was teaching very, him. He was very um, spontaneous for doing things. Oh. And, uh, he, dad was always the thinker for him rather than the other way. Oh, yes. right. Yeah, well, that's why you put yes. Peg annoyed, yeah. Yes. Now, on the Tuesday, Mum, you're shopping in the morning for sequins. Obviously, where you've altered the dresses, you've got <laughs> yes. to put more sequins back on the ballet dress. And then it says you returned some glacé cherries to Dyson's, which was your local shop, yes. because you thought they were poor quality, but they wouldn't uh, change them for no. you. So, I uh, loved making cherry cake. Did you? Yes. Oh, righty-ho. Yes. Yeah. On the Wednesday, you thoroughly spring cleaned the bedroom, Mum. Oh, and that Washing was a big job then. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. And Dad went to see Bridge Over the River Kwai, and he liked it. So the next evening, you went to see it, and he babysat so that you could go and see it. Oh, that was a famous film. That went yes. on for years and years. Yes. You did shopping in the morning, and you took down and washed laced curtains. Yes, they were heavy lace. Right. <sighs> And golly, when I think back to when I was small, my yeah. mother used to starch them. Did she? To make them hang. But so you didn't starch no, them? No, I didn't starch them. Right, but they obviously were dirty yes, because... because of the, all the coal and when you d just lit the fire and cleaned yeah, the fire and everything. Yeah. They got quite grubby. On the next day, on the Friday, Mum, you walked to Haringey, which was a jolly good old right. fair walk. Yes. And why did you do it? It was worth it because you wanted to see the new walls. Oh. Yeah. And, of course, that was then, everything was sixpence. Nothing was more oh, than sixpence. Oh, right, okay. I think the, the nickname that was called the Sixpenny Store. Oh, right. So, well, that was, I mean, we grew up with Woolworths, yes. didn't we? Yes. And came in the evening, so that was nice. And um, on the Saturday, you took me for the dress rehearsal and Dad took Chrissy to football. Well, he's only two. Yes. Two and one month and, then and he's they, going to football. In Spurs, at Spurs. Yeah. They used to have to stand up. So they had to put loads of coats on. And, yes. And, he yes. was obviously in the pram, I would imagine. I can't imagine. He was... Well, Dad, I should think Dad... Yeah, he didn't so, hold him for the whole match. But then where were you put the pram? I've yeah. got a feeling. Perhaps you could have the pram. Well. Yes, that's a puzzle. But yes. he, certainly I know you held him while the match was on. Right. Well, he slept all through yes. it. Yes. So oh. uh, it was freezing cold, heavy snow, and he but, took the yes. baby. Well, we'd call him a baby, wouldn't yes. we? But no, he's taken him to football. <laughs> He got to get him used to spurs. Yeah, but he slept spurs. all through. Yes. He's probably frozen <laughs> solid, Mum. <laughs> and then on the Monday, you did your washing. You went shopping, and what? Guess what happened? Dad came home feeling queer, poorly. Yes, yes. heavy cold. Yes. Well, it's because going round he, because he'd been with Len. Yes, he's been poorly for yeah. ages. Shopping in the morning next day, and you paid the television license. 
Four oh, pounds. Goodness, that was quite a lot quite of money a bit. then. Yeah, yes. but you loved your telly then, yes. didn't you? Yes. Yeah. I washed all the ceiling and walls in the kitchen. It looks like new again. Yes. And Penny and Diane found a briefcase on the wall outside and you traced it to an owner. Uh, uh, you traced it to owners of a firm in Tottenham and the next day they sent a van man round and gave us ten shillings. shillings yes. And we shared it. Yes. That was nice. That was five shillings each. It would have bought you something yeah, quite nice. something then. good, yes. wouldn't it? Yeah. Yes. And no. then on the Wednesday with the heavy snow, Mum, you took the washing to the laundrette. I think you'd had enough. Yes. Yes. Of course, that was the laundrettes were very new then. Yes. And you could just go in and have clothes. If you washed them at home, you could still go in and have them dried. Yeah. If, if you only wanted them dried. Oh, righty ho. Or you could do the whole thing and have yeah. them washed. Yeah. Of course, they weren't very cheap. So. No, but you did it because it was obviously yes. heavy the snow weather, and freezing the was cold. Awful. Then yes. on the Thursday, Mum, you thoroughly cleaned and polished the living room in the morning. And um, Diane was home from school. Yeah. Uh, so um, you had her. Uh, she was home with sickness, but never mind you having two children. No. She came in to you, and then you went and visited your brother and sister in law <laughs> in the afternoon. And uh, you were um, home at 8 30, so you were out a yes. lot of the day after yes. thoroughly cleaning and polishing the living room. Yes. And then at the yes. back, you've got a recipe for good furniture polish one ounce of white wax, one ounce of beeswax. One ounce of Castile soap, a half a pint of turps, and a half a pint of boiling water. So you're making your own oh. polish. So when you say you thoroughly cleaned and polished the living room, oh, yes. I bet it was gorgeous. Yes. I bet it was gorgeous. Yes. So we come to the end of February, mm. Mum. Yes. Yeah, so we'll have a look at March and next the, time. Interesting bit. There, all through that, really was yeah. that in those days you shopped every day yeah. because you didn't have a fridge. The tills then yeah. were so different to now. They yeah. didn't, you know, the, the shopkeepers then yeah. didn't have automatic tills, no. they all had to press buttons. Yes. Shopping was so different. So know. different. And then, of course, we ate very differently. We, yes. Pasta wasn't heard yes. of. Pizza wasn't heard no. of. You only had rice, rice pudding. Yes. You didn't have rice with your meal. Um, no. You didn't have chicken because it was so expensive. Mm. You were saving up for one yes, for, Easter, for Easter, weren't that's you? that's right. You had what, chicken. What you did have, you told me, you'd often buy maybe a, a piece of beef and then on the Monday yes. you'd mince it. I remember that's mincing right. yes. it. And yes. we'd have mince Everybody then. Everybody yeah. then had a mince. Yeah. You never threw any bits mm, away. No. Everything um, was used. Yeah. Yes. You yes. said you like spam. Spam when oh. that came when that first came out. Oh, I never <gasps> ate spam. Yes. And yes. we didn't have like snacks. We never had crisps at home. No. You had those if you went for yes. a drink, didn't you? Yeah. So our food in my head it doesn't enter what I no. ate. All no. I remember no. is tin fruit and evaporated mm. milk. And I think that was very amazing. often it was Roast on a Sunday, and if you couldn't afford a whole joint, there was always some way that you could have something you could roast. And cold on Monday, with, yeah, with with um, bubble and squeak, bubble and squeak, yes, 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 cold things. And then it was nearly always so, so that when you went shopping, you just knew, right, yeah. tomorrow is this and this is what I'm going to buy, you yeah. know. I mean, we didn't have yogurts. You know how you say to no, children, now yeah. go and get yogurt out the fridge. Yes. We never had yogurts. No. We ne no. Nothing like that. No. 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 If you were hungry, you had a bit of bread and butter, basically. <laughs> yes. Didn't you? Or you might have a biscuit, you know. Yeah, biscuit yes. or a piece yes. of homemade yes. cake. Yes. Because yes. I think you must have been making mm. cakes all the oh, time. Oh, yes. Yeah. Is. Ginger cake, I think I remember. Yes, and cherry cake. Cherry cake. Yes. That's right. You still the like the cherry cake, yes. don't you? Yes. yes. Lovely. Right, well, we'll say cheerio. Yes. And we'll see you next time for March. Lovely. <laughs> okay. Bye -bye. I, I expect it'll be a bit of the same, Mum, washing, cleaning. Oh, perhaps the weather was better. Ah, oh, perhaps the weather will be better, yes. let's hope.
Yes. Do you know, I don't think it is. I think you go on holiday and it's freezing <laughs> and you still can't get any coal. But we'll wait and see. <laughs> Bye yes, then. It's lovely. Bye-bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Enjoyed talking about it with her. So the fascinating fact this week is about a European large blue butterfly. Are you like me? When you see a blue butterfly, oh, it's so exciting. Well, this particular blue butterfly lays her eggs on wild thyme blossoms. The caterpillar feeds on the blossoms and then I think very bravely the caterpillar just plops to the ground. When you think of all the predators that would like to eat that caterpillar but it just plops to the ground. A red ant finds it and it's a particular red ant. There's quite a few different red ants but this is the one that this caterpillar needs. And when they see each other, it's like they know each other. The ant strokes the, strokes the tenth segment of this caterpillar. And what the caterpillar then does is release honeydew. And the, the ant feeds on that. And then the ant decides to carry her back to the nest. And she looks after her for ten crucial months. So that caterpillar then is in this ant nest uh, for 10 months. She feeds on the ant grubs and in return the ants get the honeydew. And then in early June the caterpillar forms this chrysalis and it's quite near the colony entrance and then it emerges to crawl above ground two weeks later as a butterfly. Well in the 1970s they became extinct in the UK and a bid to save them was put into operation. But why the, were they no longer successful? They just could not work it out. They put it down to collectors or then maybe the motorways being built. A lot of work was done and some on Dartmoor which we know very well. We used to go riding over Dartmoor and what they noticed was that farmers had stopped grazing their livestock and the wild rabbits, they'd fallen victim to myxomatosis, so they'd stop nibbling the grass, obviously. And when the ants' habitation became overgrown, the temperatures dropped in the nest and the ant population diminished. And so without the ant, the large blues, they declined and then became extinct. And it wasn't an really fully appreciated that this ant relationship was the cause of it all. There was a quote here, I'll read it, it says human beings are so much larger than insects it's very hard for us to appreciate that what to us is an imperceptible change in habitat can have devastating consequences for a species like the bizarre and beautiful large blue butterfly. A difference of a centimetre in grass length can change the soil temperature by two or three degrees Celsius. And if you're the size of an ant or a butterfly, that difference is massive, explained Professor Thomas. They're his words. And so it was all down to this ant. They'd need just the right conditions to thrive and then they need this relationship. Well, the National Trust... Uh, if you look on their website, you'll see they're reintroduce, reintroducing the large blue. Um, they got the eggs, you know, from, I can't remember what country now. But anyway, uh, they're putting it, you know, on their ground where it's grazed and it's just the right conditions. And now the large blue are making a comeback. So that's my fascinating fact for this week. Yeah, how nature is so independent interdependent. So um, earlier in the week I wanted to make, I saw Paul Hollywood, he made some individual apple pies and I wanted to make some because I do think if you have visitors it's nice to put a piece of slice of cake but also an individual apple pie. Well before I always made them just you know, anyway he showed us a different way and so I thought while I was making them, I'd just have a chat with you and see you the other side. 
So I just wanted to make some deep individual apple pies. I mean, I usually make an apple pie and that's that. But these look very nice, so I thought I'd try them with you. So what I need is, uh, or what you need if you're going to do it too, is 275 grams of plain flour. So I put mine on the scales here, 275. Do you want to be able to see? Let me see if I can push you back. That's better, isn't it? 275. Okay, you know me and cooking, it just depends how it goes. 275. Oh, I hope I got enough. Two seven five. Okay, well you couldn't see much there, could you? Two seven five in there. I think you've got that. Well, now one hundred and forty grams of cold butter. Now you would use block butter and cut it into small cubes, but I can't do that because I've got a lactose, as I say every time, and this is lacto-free. So it's just ordinary butter but it's lacto-free. You might be dairy intolerant and have to make it with something else. But I want 140, so I reset my scales to 140. I've washed my hands. As Paul Hollywood says, hands are made to use. So, 140. Thirty-nine. I should have a penny on 40. I should have a penny on, it's silly, I'm sitting here without a penny. Right, I'm just going to wash my hands. I'll wash my hands and put my penny on. Right, now I'm going to put in uh, four tablespoons of, no, that's, that's, that's water. One tablespoon of icing sugar. Dig down that tablespoon. Right, there's my tablespoon of icing sugar. Okay, now I'm just going to rub that in. I'm going to stand up because I have to get, <laughs> I want to stand up. Okay, you okay there? And I'm just going to rub that in quickly. Oh, Pete's gardening out there. And you're squishing that butter through your fingers. Squish it through. Squishing, squishing. Until it's all squished through beautifully. And it's all mixed up. You can do it in the mixer, but it's hardly worth it. Because it soon comes together. Now I want three to four tablespoons of three to four tablespoons of cold water. See how quickly that comes together because I've squished it all through the flour. That's it. That's all squished. Three to four tablespoons. Okay, I'll just get my water. I've got three here. I'm pouring it in. You know me, I do my pastry with a knife now. And I just... Do it round. It's sort of toy... Oops! Don't put it all over the shop, Penny. Is that all going to mix together or do I need a little bit more? It's coming. It's coming. I think that'll be all right. Squish it together. 
get all the bowl clean. Don't need the scales. This is clean, this top. I'm just going to give it a little knead just to make sure. Not like loaf of bread, but uh, yeah, that's gone together lovely. Okay, so we make it into a, a round one. And I keep this in the fridge. I use it for my pastry and all of that. It's waxed so you can wash it through. Now I'm going to pop that in the fridge for about 20 minutes. So I'm just going to get tidied up here, pop it in the fridge and I'll be back. Won't be a minute. So just to show you what filling I'm putting in, I've got two cooking apples and they've been cooked. And I'm just now going to uh, peel two eating apples and, you know me, just pop it in. Well, you can dice it all up on a board, but, you know, that's how I do it anyway. Look, and I just cut it into smallish pieces. Now that's going to give it texture. But the cooked apple gives it that lots of apple um, to eat, if you see what I mean. Do you get what I mean? Right, so I've got texture there with the cooking apple, with the eating apples. But I've got all the lovely unctuousness with the cooked apple. Okay, so... I'm just going to get my pastry out now. I'll be back in a minute. I'm hoping this is cold enough. Let's just see. It could be a little bit colder, but you know what? I'm going to do it. It's always the way, isn't it? I might roll it out on here. That'd be all right. I think I'll do it on here. Let's see what that's like. I'm going to do it in half. It's easier for me, for my hands. Now, this used to be my kitchen, <laughs> with Pete cooking occasionally at the weekends. But when Pete retired, which was 17 years ago, he retired from ill health. But uh, we managed anyway. Um, and of course it became his kitchen then, because he, you know, he did the cooking, because he could. I carried on working as a counsellor and he cooked but well, now of course I can't find anything of mine so I don't know where all my cake cutters are I did find them the other day and put them somewhere safe and now I can't find them so I've, I'm improvising with different things that I've found I think that should be alright shouldn't it Let's try it, shall we? Can you see it? Can you see what it's like? That's it. Rolled out. All right, now, I've now got to... Oh, I think I should... I think I should butter my... It is non-stick, but I just feel like... I should butter my tray. It's quite a deep one, and we might not be able to get them out if we don't. Most people have all this done, don't they? But there we are. I'm chatting to you whilst I do it. It's nice. Right, I'll just do six for a minute, because it might not work, might it? I just don't know. 
I've got the lid of a jar. We keep our porridge in this jar. My dad bought a rock factory, as you do, and there was all these lovely glass jars there. And I've got a couple, and this is the lid of one, which we keep our porridge in. Shall I see what that's like? So, you know, you can use anything, as long as it fits. I don't know if it'll fit. I'll show you. See, it's nice and deep. There it is. Fitting nicely. Okay. I'll do six. All right. Six. Seven. <laughs> While I'm here, I might as well, mightn't I? Fold that up again. Ten. Right, I'm not going to chance anymore because I've got to get the lids out, haven't I? I've got this, mind you, but I've got to do the lids. So. If we can, we will. Right. That's getting quite soft now. So I'm going to pop that back in the fridge just for a minute while I fill those up. Because if it gets soft, it's difficult. Okay, so now I'm going to attempt, these are what it looks like. Okay. I was always taught to put a little bit of semolina in the bottom there and then it soaks up the juice. However, Paul Hollywood says just make a hole in the top of the pastry. So we'll see how we go. I'm going to put a spoon in there. He says, pack it in. Put it down. He wants a nice lot. Oh, it's delicious. He wants a nice lot in there. Yeah, but don't get too much on your spoon. We'll be in a pickle. Pack it in. Now I've got to, oh, it's gorgeous. I've got to, there it is, roll out and get through the tops. Oh, Pete's coming in, he wants to cook dinner. You see why I did it in half? It's too big to manhandle otherwise. It rolls out nicely, doesn't it? Right, let's do. Now... Make a slit. Yes, I've made a hole in it basically. Pop that on there and, jo and join the edges together. Like that. That's it. All joined together. So I have got enough for 12, but I needed a little bit more apple. That's two cooking apples and two eating apples, but maybe if the cooking apples and the eating apples were bigger, then there would be enough to fill that. So this is going to go in the fridge for something else. It's only a little bit, but maybe a couple of jam tarts, eh? Right, so I'm going to put those in the oven. I'll come back when they're cooked and we'll see what they're like. So here are the apple pies. And I think they were a success. They did puff up and then I let them go, you know, well, they're, they're just slightly warm. I mean, they're... See, they're deep. That was the point of it. So it's full of apple. Ah. 
And what I like about them is you get a nice lot of pastry. When I make, you know, my big apple pie, you just get the pastry on the top and the bottom. But with that, you get a nice bit of, I really enjoyed them. So I'll be making those again. So shall we do some TA? This week the TA is just to finish off the OK Corral. And the part of the OK Corral that we're going to do this week is I'm not OK. You're not OK. Oh, it's not a good situation to be in, is it? But we can handle it in adult. Going into script won't help at all. So here we go. The phone rings. Do you remember? I'm doing this project. And it's my partner calling from home. Something awful's happened. A water pipe, it's burst. And the whole carpet's got soaked. And before I could turn the water off, it's all ruined. How am I going to handle that? I'm in the middle of this report. That is what I'm doing. I could go into script. Script is, I'm not okay. You're not okay. Sort of gives us the idea that uh, we're not going to get anywhere at this rate. I say to myself, I've had enough. I can't take this any longer. She's no help. Or he's no help. My partner. It's hopeless. I sigh into the phone. Look, I just can't take this. It's too much after the day I've had. And without waiting for an answer, I hang the phone up. I feel drained. I feel depressed. I've reinforced my view that I'm not okay and neither are others okay. In fact, it's hopeless, isn't it? I'm getting nowhere. Flipping neck. Or I could handle it in adult. Hmm, how might that go? little bit different I think I'm okay you're okay it's just that the carpet's got ruined so I decide to stay an adult and I say look the harm's done now just go and hold till I get home try and hold the fault bear with and then we'll see what I can do put the phone down I carry on with my report I wait until I get home and I deal with the situation then Unless, obviously, it's a 999 emergency. And then it would be going down to see my boss and saying, I've got a 999 emergency. I know this report is very important, but I have to leave. I'm still in adult. I'm okay. You're okay. But this can wait. The damage is done. And we'll sort it out when I get home. I'm okay. You're okay. I haven't gone into that script of everything being hopeless. <sighs> can't take any more, they're no help at home, why can't they sort it out, it's a disaster, I'm not okay, you're not okay, can you see that? So it's great if we can learn how to stay an adult, how to be I'm okay, you're okay, so think about those four parts of the okay corral. I'm okay, you're okay, get on with. That's the healthy position. If we're in script and we want to get away from, then it's a question of I am not okay and you are okay because I want to get away from you. That's not healthy. In fact, you can be quite depressed when you're in that situation. Get nowhere with, that's the one we've just talked about. I'm not okay, you're not okay. It's futile. It doesn't get anybody anywhere. And then we've got this paranoid position where we have to get rid of him. But if we go into adult, it will mean that we're all okay and we're going to handle it differently. Any questions on a postcard, please? So I can't say where I'm going to be going next week because I need to fathom that out. So it's time for the little film of Tommy at three months and I'll see you next week all being well. You take care, happy crafting and uh, yeah enjoy, it might be lovely where you are, I don't know. I'm getting viewers from all parts of the world now and I know in some parts it's still frozen solid, in other parts it's warm 
And so whatever the weather is like, please take care and um, I'll see you next week if I can. Bye. Well, you kept me awake all night, actually. Did he, Granddad? <laughs> I didn't even know you were there.